Let's start with the question, what is DHCP? DHCP is the Dynamic Host Configuration Protocol, and it allows clients to automatically obtain IP information from a centralized DHCP source. Instead of manually or statically assigning IP information to multiple computers, a DHCP device can take care of this for you automatically. Most companies will use this technology, and this is because the protocol reduces the amount of system administration, allowing devices to be added to the network with little or no manual intervention. The IP information obtained could include IP addresses, subnet masks, gateway addresses, DNS server addresses, and other advanced options. A server or appliance runs the DHCP service, and it's configured to send this information to the clients. Usually, it is client computers that benefit from this service. However, sometimes servers also obtain IP information automatically. This will depend on the type of server, and in this respect, the server also becomes a client. For example, a file server may host files, but it may be a client of a DHCP server when it comes to getting its IP address. Quite often, there are a few types of hosts that are excluded from the scope of DHCP including routers, firewalls, and some servers. The real beauty of a DHCP device is that it is fast, efficient, and, if correctly configured, will not cause an IP conflict, which are one of the banes of static IP addressing. Now, let's move on to installing and configuring DHCP. And this procedure will accomplish the following. We'll install the DHCP service on a Windows 2003 server, then we'll configure an IP scope on that server so it can hand out IP addresses to clients. Then we'll activate the scope and authorize the DHCP server. And we'll connect to the DHCP server with the Windows XP client and obtain IP information automatically. Let's show a demonstration of this now. OK, I've made a remote desktop connection to my server. And the first thing I want to do is install the DHCP service. So we're going to go to Start, Control Panel, and I'm going to select Add Remove Programs. From there, we select the Add Remove Windows Components button, and that'll bring up the Add Remove Windows Components window. Okay, once in the Windows Components window, we'll go down to Networking Services, we'll highlight the Networking Services name, and go to Details, and then we'll select Dynamic Host Configuration Protocol, DHCP, just by checkmarking it and clicking OK. And we'll click Next. And that's going to start the installation of the uh, DHCP service. And now we see that the service has been installed, and we're at the Completing the Windows Components Wizard uh, Finish screen. So we'll click Finish. And that'll complete the installation. And we'll close out of the Add or Remove Programs window. So now DHCP has been installed. Now I want to make modifications to DHCP and configure an IP scope. Now, you could do this by going to Start, All Programs, and then go to Administrative Tools, or you could use your MMC. And uh, if you don't have one, I recommend making one. I have an MMC down here, so I'm going to open that up now. And this centralizes all my snap-ins. I always use one of these. So I'm going to add the DHCP snap-in now by going to File, Add Remove Snap-in, we'll go to Add, and then we're going to scroll down and select DHCP. We'll click Add, and Close, and OK. Now we have the DHCP Snap-in, we'll click the plus sign for that, and it automatically sees the local computer, my 2003 DC, that's the name of the computer, and its IP, 10.0.0.3. We'll click the plus sign to open that, and you'll notice that it has a red arrow pointing down. That means that DHCP is not running right now. So we need to configure it and get it to work. So first thing, we need to make an IP scope, a range of IP addresses that this server will hand out. So I'll right click on the server and select New Scope. That brings us to the New Scope wizard. We'll click Next. And we can name the scope. I'll just call this IP underscore scope and click Next. And uh, now we need to put in the range of IP addresses. So the start IP is going to be 10.0.0.100. I'm going to leave 1 to 99 open for static addresses that might be used on my network. And we'll start with the DHCP range at 100. 
the end IP will be 10.0.0.199. By default, the subnet mask will be 255.0.0.0, class A subnet mask. So I'm going to leave that as is, and we'll click Next. And now it asks about exclusions. You could exclude addresses uh, if you need to. We don't really need to do that at this point. I'm, uh, I have some static addresses that are set up as .1, .2, .3, all the way through to about .15. So I don't need to add exclusions within that range. So I'll click Next for this. And next is lease duration. By default, this is eight days. Some companies may do more. Some may do less. I'm going to leave it as a default. And this means that the IP address will be renewed every eight days from the uh, DHCP server. We'll click Next. And now it asks about advanced options. I do want to configure this, so I'll leave it as yes and click Next. And the first advanced option is a router or a default gateway. The default gateway is my multifunction device, and its IP address is 10.0.0.1. So I'll type that in and add it, and we'll click Next. Next is a DNS server. You could specify the DNS server that you will be using on the network. I do have a DNS server running on this network. In fact, it's this same computer that's running DHCP. And so we need to put in three pieces of information. The first is the domain name, which is dpro.com. The next is the server name. And for this computer, it's 2003 DC. And then the IP address, which is 10.0.0.3. And we'll add that in now and click Next. Next is Win servers. Uh, we're not running any Win servers labs in this, uh, in this uh, product, but uh, Win servers may be available on your network. You may need them for specific devices. If you have one, you just type in the name of that server and its IP address and add that to the list as well. And that information will flow through to the clients. We'll click Next for that. And it asks us, do we want to activate the scope? Yes, that's one of the uh, steps here. So we'll activate the scope now, click Next, and Finish. That creates the scope. And if we click on the scope, we'll see all kinds of information here, including scope options, which includes our router or our, D our DNS server. Now, last thing we need to do is authorize the server so that it will start handing out IP addresses. We'll right-click on the server, and we'll go to Authorize. That may take a moment to authorize the server. And what we want is to see a green arrow pointing up. Now, sometimes this doesn't happen automatically. You may need to first press F5 to refresh the screen. If that doesn't work, you'll need to close the MMC and save it, and then reopen it. When we do so, we see the green arrow is indeed pointing up. The service has started, and the server is ready to hand out IP addresses. OK, now we're back at the Windows XP laptop. And the last step is to connect to the DHCP server with this Windows XP client and obtain that IP information automatically. So I'm going to go to the IP properties page of my LAN network adapter. And from here, the configuration is very straightforward. We just click on the radio button for obtain an IP address automatically. And when we do so, the static information that we had previously is grayed out. We can also click on the radio button for Obtain DNS Server Address Automatically. And we'll click OK and Close, and that'll bind the information to the network adapter. And by the way, uh, this is the default configuration for Windows clients uh, when you first get them. And I'm sure you've seen this configuration before. Uh, any adapter that you first install will be set to obtain IP addresses automatically. And we see down here it says LAN is now connected, so I'm fairly sure that it has obtained IP addressing from the server. So we'll go to the command line and we'll run an IP config. And indeed it has. Here's the IP address, 10.0.0.100. That's the first IP in the range that we set up on the server. And for more information, we can do an IP config slash all. This tells us that indeed DHCP is enabled. It says yes right here tells us the IP address and subnet mask, and it tells us the gateway and the DNS server address. So all that information is being given to the client by the server, by the uh, DHCP server. So we know it works. Let's talk about how DHCP works. DHCP sessions use a four-stage process known as DORA. 
The first stage is the discovery stage. The client computer will broadcast out to the network to find a DHCP server. The second stage is the offering stage. That's when the server sends a unicast offering of an IP address to the client. And normally the client will accept this IP address. The third stage is the request stage. And that's when the client broadcasts to all servers on the network that it has accepted a DHCP offering. And finally, the acknowledgement. That's when the server unicasts the final information to the client and the IP information is bound to the network adapter. Now, when the computer initially does this, it goes through all four stages. However, if a computer needs to release and then renew an address, it'll only go through the last two stages. So subsequent DHCP requests to a server we'll go through the last two stages only. And let's demonstrate that now with the ipconfig slash release and slash renew commands. I'll go to the command line. And first I'll run an ipconfig real quick. And again, we're seeing here that the IP address we're using is 10.0.0.100. Now, if I needed to remove that address temporarily, I could do an ipconfig slash release. And that will remove that IP. Now the IP address just says 0.0.0.0. .0. So we have no IP address at this point. Later, if I want to get my IP information back, I can do an IP config slash renew. And that will take a moment. It's going to go through those two stages of Dora and connect to the server and get that address back. Now in reality, what's happening here is this address, the same address, .100, has been stored in the registry of my client computer. So it remembers the address it has. And really it's just trying to say, OK, I want to keep this address. And one of the reasons it can do that is because it's still within the lease time that's been given to that address by the server. Now, you may need to use ipconfig release and renew when a DHCP server has been updated, or maybe if you incorporate a new DHCP device on your network. For example, I'm getting the address from a DHCP server, an actual 2003 server right now. But what if I incorporated a multifunction device on my network, and now I want that device to hand out IP addresses? I'm going to have to do an IP config release and renew so I can get that new address right away. I don't want to wait for the lease time to end on my current address. So IP config release and renew can be some pretty good troubleshooting tools uh, when you're dealing with IP addresses. Do you remember a PIPA, Automatic Private IP Addressing? I'm sure you do. Well, sometimes a PIPA can get in the way of a client obtaining IP information from a DHCP device. If it takes too long to get the information, then a PIPA will kick in on the local computer and auto-assign an IP address on the 169.254 network, which we don't want. So let's show how to disable a PIPA. And what we're going to do is we're going to go to the run prompt and open the registry editor by typing regedit. From here, we need to navigate down to our interfaces and turn off a PIPA by adding a D word. So I'm going to go to H key local machine, system, current control set, services, and scroll all the way down to TCP IP. Open that up and go to Parameters and Interfaces. You'll see several interfaces here. These keys include every interface that has ever been installed or configured on this computer. And what we need to do is click on them and find out which one we want to turn off a PIPA for. Well, the adapter I want to turn off a PIPA on is the adapter that's got the 10.0.0.100 IP address. So just by looking at the IP address of each of these keys, should work out for us. And that's not it. Not this one. Not this one. Here we go. Here's the IP address, 10.0.0 to 100. This is where I want to add the D word. So I'll right click in the white area, go to new, D word, and we'll call this IP auto configuration enabled. And press enter. And we want to make sure that's set to zero. Well, I can see it's set to zero by default here, but you can also double click on it to open it and edit the value if need be. 
So the name of the D word is IP Auto Configuration Enabled, and just make sure it's set to zero. When you restart the computer, a PIPA will be turned off. Last is DHCP port assignments. As you can see here, there's two ports that DHCP uses. On the server side, we've got port 67, and on the client side, we've got port 68. Both of these should show up on the server if we run the netstat command. So let's show a demonstration of this. Uh, this is my server. This is my remote desktop connection to the server. And we'll go to the command line, and we'll run a netstat-an. And we're going to see a lot of information here for IP version 4 and IP version 6. But if we look up here in the UDP area, we see the IP address of the server and port 67 and port 68. They're open and listening and waiting to hand out IP addresses to clients. Okay, that's it for lab five. In this lab, we described the dynamic host configuration protocol. We configured a Windows 2003 server to assign IP addresses automatically by installing the DHCP service, configuring an IP scope and activating it, and authorizing the server. And then we obtained the IP information automatically from the DHCP server with the Windows client, and defined and showed how DHCP works, and showed you IP config slash release and renew, and we also showed you how to turn off a PIPA if need be. Up next is Lab 6, wiring with Category 5E cable.